Welcome back to the Global Business Report on Arise News. Ahead of Nigeria's uh, general election, there are concerns about the need to protect telecommunication infrastructure throughout the country. Uh, Fola Shadi Aziz filed this report on an awareness campaign by civil society groups. The Nigeria Communications Commission Defense Headquarters, the Nigeria Police and Civil Society groups are all in the hall with one intention to protect telecom infrastructure ahead of the 2023 general elections. For many years, telecoms, power, oil and gas infrastructure have been a target of vandals, crippling economic activities, especially in the northern part of the country. But those gathered here say it is time to protect the infrastructure and deal with anyone tampering with national assets. Civil society groups want the government to fish out those responsible. No nation can develop without a state of critical national infrastructure. There can never be job creation without the state of national infrastructure. Therefore, it is incumbent of all the citizens of Nigeria to protect this infrastructure against vandalism and destruction. In his message, the executive vice chairman of the Nigeria Communications Commission, Professor Umar Dambata, urges community members to notify security agencies of any illegal construction activities in their various communities. Members of respective communities must guard against the destruction of telecoms infrastructure by promptly notifying security agencies of mob activities or the service providers of any ongoing construction activities by companies or government agencies. And the Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Irabo, in his message says that the vandalization of critical infrastructure could lead to 10% decrease in revenue and disrupt the nation's economy. Vandalization of oil and gas infrastructure results in environmental degradation with the huge effect on the maritime economy, resulting in loss of revenue with other associated socioeconomic effects, like loss of jobs and health hazards. It is hoped that the recommendations from this meeting will help curtail the destruction of national assets. All right, MTN Nigeria Communications has kicked off an open 5G pilot in the lead-up to its commercial launch. company, which intends to launch 5G services in Lagos, Abuja, Port Harcourt, Ibadan, Kano, Oweri, and Meduguri, is testing the next-generation network infrastructure. Customers with certain enabled devices will be allowed to connect with and try out the new service where coverage is available. Joining us to discuss further is Adia So, who is the Chief Marketing Officer for MTN Nigeria. Adia, you're very, very welcome. Thank you so much, Chef for joining us. So um, what went into, you know, the seven states uh, that you picked for the pilot? Uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, so first of all, what goes into decisions like that? Uh, the license is granted to us by the Nigerian government. Of course. So in order to meet the obligations of the license, we have to launch in each of the geopolitical zones. Mm. And then, of course, once we take that in, we look at, from a business uh, consideration perspective, we look at the number of people that have 5G um, enable devices, population centers, heavy data users, and so on and so forth. So there's a, there's a myriad of considerations that goes into the site selection. But of course, the plan is to go nationwide with 5G over time. So mm. if you don't have it now, it's just a matter of time. You will get it soon. And we understand customers can partake in the pilots. How, 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 how does that work? Okay, so, so right now we are leading this launch through our home broadband routers. So okay. that's the first point of contact. So if you go to our website and search for 5G router, that's the first point of contact for you to, to get 5G. Over the next few months, we will gradually be releasing onto certain handsets. Yeah, oh, great stuff. Can you talk about the supports of the government in getting things this far? I mean, you already mentioned, of course, the auction and so on. What, what else has the, I guess, government done, in, you know, being able to facilitate yeah, this? Yeah, I think, I think launching 5G in Nigeria is a massive achievement, right? Because as at the end of 2021, there were only 80, 85 countries in the world that had launched 5G. So mm. for Nigeria to be at the forefront of the launch of such a revolutionary technology is yep. amazing and could not have been done without the support of our government. Now, it's also launching 5G also plays a big part in us supporting the government meets the broadband initiative to get 70% of Nigeria's population covered with broadband yes. in internet. So, so, so 5G is a big part of that and we're but, happy to support the government. Fantastic. So speaking of the government. Yes. 
trying to get this ahead, right, with infrastructure limitations, how well can one, you know, um, as far as, you know, the telcos in Nigeria, how, how far can you proceed when you've got the infrastructure limitations that they are? What kind of help, you know, or what needs to happen, you know, for you to be able to advance that? I mean, there's nothing that's happened with 5G that we haven't been experiencing, having been in Nigeria now for 21 years. So, mm. Of course, there are challenges, but you know we work with the government hand in hand to support us to, to overcome them as they arise. Christoph, I want to read a quote uh, from you uh, where it says, where you said that every major technological evolution redefines what is possible, changing the way we live and the way we connect. MT Nigeria have been at the forefront of every leap uh, in telecommunications, uh, you know, from GSM, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, and the likes, and has the potential to change everything, allowing you guys to connect, create, collaborate, and compete in ways that we've never seen before. <laughs> what do you say, right, to uh, those who say that, well, we're doing this with 5G. There's still parts of the country that are still in 3G and 4G and are yet to get there. Mm -hmm. Can we, I guess, walk mm -hmm. and chew gum at the same time or something? What's, yeah. what's your response to that? Yeah, I mean, so first of all, uh, technology permeates. It doesn't appear instantly. Right. Like uh, roads or even WCs. Right. They haven't reached every part of Nigeria that either. Is, and these true. things have been, you know, invented decades ago, right? Yeah. So um, we are doing our best. 4G coverage by the end of this year, we'll cover 80, 90% of the population from MTN Nigeria. So okay. again, these things do take time, but like I said, technology permeates. Unfortunately, it can't appear once instantly because there's a lot required in terms of educating the users to mm. understand why technology um, is being deployed, how it's useful, what benefits it offers them, and so on and so forth. Mm. Okay, so if we look at, and I guess, you know, along the same lines, yeah. it, it, internet subscribers in the country by states, Lagos obviously leads as the commercial capital, followed by, I think, is it Ogun or, or a couple other states. Um, is there any okay so yes there it is yeah it is ogun second place kano yes. third or any fear of a of a of a an imbalance going forward that i guess you know uh, these numbers grow and there's a disparity between the different states as far as connect, internet subscribers and connectivity is concerned so i i think we are conscious of that and we are trying to make our services as open and accessible to all people of all tribes and you know both genders and so on and so forth right yeah. so so where we do notice a disparity we do try to lean in to support we support with um, either products that help educate customers on the value um, you know, of advancing to more complex data services. Mm. We help them with uh, trial, uh, trials so that they can understand what the services, the value of the services is and help them migrate. Um, we've just launched device financing. So we're also going to be leaning into uh, handset and device affordability programs, again, to support people you know, to, to, to enter and participate in and build wealth from the digital economy. Yeah, great stuff. All right, I want to get your thoughts on cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. We had a guest earlier this week where we were talking about um, the development of 5G and then what that might, you know, mean for vulnerability. So I wanted to take a listen to, uh, to this, uh, 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 this talk we had earlier in the week. Okay. 5G. The, the, the exposure it brings to our way of life, yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's become, a, it's become a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. Now, the propensity of attacks will now transcend. You know, we say we lose close to $400 billion or so yeah. every year for the finance services. Yeah. Now, it, 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 the domain of telcos and, 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 and finance services will become <laughs> real focus. But the, the, basic, the basic lifestyle, mm. the basic enterprises that, that do, do business in the, in the services area will become um, exposed to this risk, and then I would, in terms of things, will with five G, the the preparedness of the country mm. um, around the risk of cyber yeah. has to be improved. But by the way, there's a challenge. So what what do you have to say about that idea? What what about what do you make of the I guess cybersecurity five G and what what it could open up? So so um, the first airplane brought a reaction like that. Yeah. Elevators, escalators, lifts, any technology usually is welcomed with both a mix of wonder and fear. Yeah. Now, um, he did raise valid concerns, right? Um, we need to have local talent that can handle cybersecurity issues, but these issues are not being caused by 5G itself. Right, right, right. We, we will all agree, I'm sure we'll agree that Nigeria is an infrastructure light country, right? Mm -hmm. Our opportunity to build that infrastructure is with digital services, okay? So as we digitize infrastructure, the oil that makes that infrastructure move is data. Mm. So we must share data. For us, it's the difference between having and not having. It's, there's no offline option for infrastructure that doesn't exist. I agree that we must 
um, enter the digital economy with care and consideration through cybersecurity. I totally agree. But we must not miss the amazing opportunity for progress mm. that uh, a digitized economy and 5G create for Nigeria. Like mm. I said, for many people, right, it gives the opportunity to build a middle class. It gives the opportunity to offer credit in real time mm. to many people that do not have access to credit right now. This, amongst many other opportunities, are created with the advent of digitized services, which are further enhanced and revolutionized by 5G. So, so yes, uh, there's definitely a challenge to respect, but please, let's not get overwhelmed by that. The, yeah. the opportunity for progress is astounding. All right, well, Vic, well, so, well, much agreed. So what's next? Are you coming out with a virtual reality headset? You are stealing my <laughs> surprises. I'm not going to give it away today, but watch this space. There's plenty in store coming. Really? Yes, there is. So you, so you can't give us any clues as to any expansion plans or anything else? That, just that's, just that's have that's me back, so I'll come back and tell you everything that we, need, what, what we have in store. Uh, dear, so uh, Chief uh, Marketing Officer with uh, MTN Nigeria, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. All right, you're watching the Global Business Report here on Arise News. We'll have more for you after the break. Do stay tuned. Thank you.